Hi, everybody. Welcome. Our next episode of Mystic News is going to be over here at La Salette Shrine, Attleboro, Massachusetts, where we are going to put the Christ back in Christmas. Here, show them the X. Hi, and welcome to Mystic News. We're here with Father Brown here at La Salette Shrine. And, you know, Father Brown, I've been coming here ever since I was a child. And one of the things I always wanted to know was, can you tell us the origin of the La Salette itself, as well as the Festival of Lights? Sure. In um, 1846 in September, two kids were herding cows, and they went up La Salette Mountain, and uh, they fell asleep. And when they woke up, the cows were gone, and they started looking around for them. They saw them over in another part of the, the mountain, but when they looked back, they saw this orb of light, and the orb of light opened up inside was a, the, what they called the beautiful woman, and she was crying. They thought it was a, uh, a woman who perhaps had lost her, her children, or perhaps they, someone had beaten her and she had run away, but she stood up and said, come closer, my children, I have great news for you. And she just gave him this message of people have to come back uh, to her son. And she talked to them for about 20 minutes, and then um, uh, she was assumed back into heaven. From that, people started going up the mountain because they had heard about, all of, uh, about this event, and the bishop sent up five priests to take care of those people that first summer. And that was the origin of the La Salette community. With the great uh, repression that happens in France in the nine, uh, 1890s, a group of them come to uh, Montreal. Uh, they got kicked out of France. They come to Montreal, and uh, they found it difficult in Montreal. Someone had said they had land for them in Texas. The land wasn't there. They come to Hartford, Connecticut. They're welcome to Hartford. Then in uh, 1946, we needed land for uh, a seminary, and they land here. From there, 1953, we open up our first festival of light. So this is the 64th anniversary of the, the lights. Absolutely love it. I mean, I'm, I remember coming as a kid, and my aunt lived up here in Attleboro, and she had a little dummy switch, and she used to tell me to flip the lights on. For like the first 15 years of my life, oh, God, well, maybe not that long. But yeah, for a while, I love it. Um, we love what you do. Um, there are other things about which I understand La Salette does do, which I was recently am learning about. Like, you guys do some counseling for families and support systems of people who deal with drug, addic drug addictions? Uh, we have all sorts of uh, support programs that go on here. One that we've just begun is for a bereavement group for people who have lost someone to drug use. It's a terrible pain. Some people are so embarrassed that their son or daughter or husband or even a best friend had uh, died because of drug use. And they always feel that they haven't done enough. We had a woman come several years ago that uh, said that she, it was the first time she ever told anyone that her son died because of, a, of drug use. So it's a, a real pain. So they're with other people who know that pain, and we just kind of lead them, lead them through that bereavement program. We have regular bereavement programs going on. Uh, we have a couple of priests here who are psychologists who will do counseling with people. We do what's called spiritual direction. You might call it spiritual counseling. People are just trying to see where God is active in their lives. So we try to help people stay connected uh, to God. It's much bigger than just getting to Mass. That's a good start, but God is active in everybody's life and can burst in at any moment, but sometimes we're unaware of it. So that's what the spiritual counseling, spiritual direction does. That's, that's really good. I love that. And I also love the fact what you do for Christmas. And I, I love how you have the lights, you have the hot toddy, you have the gift shops, you have all that stuff. But also when someone comes here, they can also go to confession, catch a Mass, things of that mm -hmm. nature. We add extra time for confessions. We add extra time uh, for mass. Confessions go every day uh, from one to four. 
uh, one to five, I'm sorry, and we have uh, uh, several priests on at once. A lot of people come, people who haven't been to confession in 30, 40 years, but they're so moved by everything going on, they do, they do come on. So uh, we're, we're here for them. And we, we hear well, about 15, 16,000 confessions a year. Okay, um, also Father, can you tell us about Father Pat? I love his music. Oh, Father Pat's uh, an institution here. He's been here about 30 years off and on, but really, really here, this is where he he's, does most of his ministry. Certainly, I, I've, I've lost count of how many albums he's put out. A uh, very, very talented musician, has a beautiful voice. People say, you know, it just soothes them. It brings them closer to God. Uh, so he's a fixture here. Uh, then he also, uh, during the Christmas season, he has concerts here at, uh, on weekends at uh, 3 and 7 p.m. So he's, he's here. He does healing ministry. He loves, he loves people, loves to welcome them, and loves to help people. That's perfect. Now, can we get his information off your website as well? It's all on the website. That's right. Which is? LaSalette-Shrine.org. Perfect. And does that also cover some of the other events that you run throughout the year? You'll find everything we're doing, or most of the things we're doing, we're always trying to keep it updated. Uh, things like over after Christmas is done, then we begin to move into things we're going to be doing some with kids over the uh, uh, Chris, uh, not Christmas break, the uh, February school vacation, uh, some activities, and then uh, children's movies that have, have some good messages behind them. Then we get into... Uh, Lent, where there'll be some uh, courses going on, some Bible study, some book reviews, book clubs. Uh, it just goes on and on. Some theology classes. Perfect, perfect. We definitely look forward to checking okay. that out. It's been nothing but a pleasure. Oh, we love Lost Let again. Thank you, Come Father. Come back anytime.
And we're here with Father Pat, who has become a fixture here for the past, what we said, 40 years at La Salette. And an amazing uh, recording artist, an amazing musician. Uh, thank you, Father, for being on the show. Oh, I'm happy to be here with you. Now, um, we were talking about this before. We, I got the... Originally got the, uh, the your your time here a little bit wrong, but so you have forty years. Mm -hmm. So why don't we discuss? Uh, you said nineteen sixty nine. You, you started nineteen sixty nine. It was the year of my ordination, and uh, yeah, we started singing at that particular time in an old little chapel, and now we're in a new building, which is wonderful. So you were here for 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 the, the changes and stuff. I mm -hmm. when I came here, I was uh, sixteen years old. And uh, we're going through the confirmation and stuff, and mm -hmm. I was here with St. Mary's uh, from in Groton, and it was just when the the old uh, place had burnt down. Nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, I yeah. was in that building. <laughs> you were. Wow. Oh yes, four o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, and couldn't believe it. Why well, it'll it'll be contained, you know? But no, it wasn't. So we, we lost it. It was sad, but uh, so now we're here at Lost Let right now, and. Um, so it's the, it's been here for, God, for, for how long? Since 1953, yeah. December 8th, 1953, in the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, with probably some 25,000 lights then, <laughs> and it was a big deal then. And how many do we have now? Like, what, 500,000? That's what they're saying. I, I'm, that's what the men out who are working with us yeah. say. There's got to be at least, you know, something like that. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Now, now, now I really wanted to get... Uh, to talk about you as a musician, if it's okay, um, uh, we just we just saw uh, Father Pat in in the um, in the uh, the church there performing. Uh, a great concert uh, had a had a great time. Um, your your strumming style is very very unique. I, 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 <laughs> it's self taught. I, that's why it's self taught. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, there was a, there was an interview once with the uh, Rolling Stones guitarist uh, uh, Keith Richards, and he said it has nothing to do with this. It has everything to do with how you strum the guitar. Uh, it helps to have this hand going very yeah, well. Yeah. It does. Uh, so um, you play a twelve string guitar. Twelve string Martin twelve string. Yes, Martin uh, D thirty six. They're unique. When did you start uh, finding out that you were music musically inclined? You want really want to know? I really would like to know. I was about nine years old. Really? Uh, back in Fall River, yes. Uh, I had an aunt who played the organ in church, and she had me sing a particular song. And I said, would you do this on the radio for us? You know, at that time, my voice was way up there. Yeah. And I said, well, sure. There was nobody around. It was in a studio, you know, and so forth. And from, the, from that moment on, then the sisters in school and so forth cultivated the voice in the choir and on and on and on and recorded in 67 in Montreal for the, uh, the World, World's Fair that was held there. And it was, it's just been going on. And I didn't think it would be so important to my ministry, music would be, you know, but it has become uh, a very important part of it. Well, it's it's like what Father Brown said, and he mentions in an interview prior to this, uh, prior to this interview, um, that uh, it it brings people comfort, and it, and it does, and it's and it really helps people get closer to God because it just it eases them, it soothes them, and we had such a great time listening to you, and uh, brought back a lot of great memories and a lot of it highlighted the the spirit of Christmas. Yeah, thanks. Um, now, uh, you have an album out. However, I'd like to talk about the Serenity album, if we can. <laughs> That's fine. Um, please tell me a little bit about that and the importance of it to you. Well, it's a song, uh, the words, first of all, are from the uh, Serenity Prayer, uh, very meaningful to a lot of people who are into groups for addictions and so forth. And I just at one particular time said, you know, that would be something to, uh, to put to music. It would be helpful to people. And so I just took the prayer as it is and, and started to play around with it and so forth. And uh, then I told uh, Tom Kenzia, who was the, the recording person for me, and uh, I said, you better make this song well. You better make it good, you know. <laughs> and he did. He did a fine job in, in uh, putting it together for me. So it, is, it's, it has come out. It's one that a lot of people enjoy hearing. It soothes them. And they even say, well, we listen to you at night, Father. We fall asleep. Oh, well, I hope that's good or bad. I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good thing. Yeah. Um, and now, um, your recent album that you've, you've just released, uh, can you tell me a little bit about that and the process of uh, producing and making that? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a big undertaking because, first of all, all the songs from this album are not my own. Right. Many other albums I have basically used my own songs, but a few, t a few times I've had... Uh, I've 
had to get the copyrights for the royalties. Mm -hmm. So in this album, too, I've gotten all the royalties. That takes a while to find the songs and who belongs to this one and that one. And then, uh, then discussing things over with... Um, I wanted to, uh, with Tom, uh, we decided on these particular songs. And... Um, I just want to, I want to bring some life, you know, into the church. I've always wanted to do that since my ordination. Um, one of the first songs I composed was The House of the Lord, and it was a very vibrant song, because in this place we're to praise the Lord from our whole being. And so today there's a lot of wonderful songs coming out from a lot of Christian groups, uh, and I've been listening to some of them, and I said, these are the ones that I'd like to do, you know, so I chose a few, a few, 14 of them for that matter, and... Uh, I'm very happy with the result, really. It, it sounds great, and, and, and it looks like you're doing an amazing job. Um, now, uh, the last question is, what does Christmas mean to you? Oh, that's a deep one. <laughs> hey, Christmas means a lot to everyone. I know that sometimes some people say, I hate Christmas. You know, it's just a terrible time. Maybe the memories of the past are are not good. And we would hope that here at La Salette, we could change some of that feeling and really get into the true meaning of Christmas. And what is that? The kingdom of God within. And that's what uh, you know, Advent's about, and this is what we're celebrating here. This, this, this season of Advent is going back you know, some 2,000 years for the birth of Christ. He's the one who brought Christmas, his light of the world. He's there. And that's what we want to discover. I think that's what we've got to get rid of all of the, you know, all of the externals and know that he's coming to take root within my heart and your heart and everyone's heart. And that someday he will return. Who knows when? We don't know. But that's what we prepare for, for that, that encounter with him who is the light of the world and who will remove all of the sadness, the brokenness of our life and all of that. It's... You know, it's a tall order to say what Christmas means to me, but I love this season because it, it's, it's a way that I'm able to speak to people who come here and to share the good news of Jesus' birth. And I just enjoy this season. That it is. And, you know, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, in, in a few moments, we're going to see uh, some of this amazing musician, and amazing, amazing individual's uh, music. Uh, so please stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris, for having me on. Thank you.
Maria, 
Kratia plena Maria Gratia plena Maria Gratia plena Ave, ave do.